going my dears I am going to hit the recording button uh, the blue area on this little screeny thing on the right will usually show um, any conversation that's happening if you're chatting to me please do it in Twitch via the chat system which might be working hopefully if there's any fortune in the world I'm just gonna browse to the panel there we go and I'm gonna pause my broadcast because it's just a waste of bandwidth right um, what I'm gonna do is just show you what I'm up to and I need to work on some pieces now if we look at these these are photographs of a high-level bridge. It was designed by George Stevenson. I think it was George Stevenson anyway. You'll notice there's a lot of repeating ironwork in it. It's a lovely piece. Um, I want to start building this. Now you can see there's a lot of interesting pieces here, as well as the cross braces here that act as rails to stop people falling into the road, because this is a road here. You've got these heavy-duty kind of um, beams here and these rather nice crossed support sections here. So there's a lot of parts that we need to build. Look at these hangers and this lamp. It's all old-fashioned cast iron job. Absolutely beautiful. Going to be lots and lots of fun. Um, now, how much I'm going to get done of this today? Who knows? Okay, I'm not going to be working for too long, but I need to get some parts of it done. Uh, the main thing I need to work out really here is scale. This is a long bridge. And while I don't necessarily want to make the entire bridge myself, I do want to make parts, if you know what I mean. So, I am going to move this over to my other monitor. I'll put it on a nice small screen and close that. And as per usual, the scale that I shall be working in will be approximately... Oh, God. Let me see. Well, a human's 1.8 metres, so... Anyway, uh, let's get ourselves a person out. Biped and pull. And 180 is what we're looking for, roughly. There we go. So that's the right height for me. Okay, now I know for a fact that George Stevenson was a stickler for measurements and stuff. Unfortunately, I'm not. But I do know that there should be enough room f basically for two people to walk abreast and then I'm basing all my calculations on this now obviously if you're doing really precise measurement work then you're going to be working directly from the schematics I'm not at the minute this is part of the project that I've been working on so I'm just going to draw out a plane on the bottom here just for my own reference I'll probably turn grid off and I want to start with a simple box and I can kind of see how big things are going to be so if I just bring that up and hit F4 so I've got the sides on and I can see that this is about 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters and a height of 3 meters do that again okay so that is 3 meters in height now I know it should be a lot higher than that but I'm just kind of doodling based on this okay so this is the bridge people go underneath now I know this bridge is gonna have a height of two meters so in actual fact we can double this up there four to four so four meters now something I need to look at here is if I go to Google I'll go to height of a double-decker bus maximum permissible length it's 15 meters the height is 4.38 meters so I am going to set high bridge buses are 20 centimeters taller I'm going to set it at a 5 meter height because vehicles go underneath this so 500 okay and this is going to give me enough space now to start doodling with now I want to get a box a new one and this will allow me to kind of draw out the widths I need here. So I'm going to assume a width of two meters. Okay, so place that next to there. Now I know the method that I use seems very kind of I don't know, laissez fair, I suppose almost. You know, um, and I admit it myself, I do 
tend to rely a lot on you know looking by eye and stuff like that okay it's just the way I work anyway try not to let that put you off if you do not like it then I do apologize now all I'm doing at the moment is I'm just trying to get the shape together so again I'm going to use a shift and drag and by no means am I trying to get this 100% like precise there we go let's just get in here just to get it to the point where these are kind of overlapping Mm, a little bit more because what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it and then I'm going to disassemble it once I've built it okay but for the moment I need to see how the parts go together okay and this obviously works for engineering stuff game stuff etc so you know there we go now I'm going to use this piece here that I've just moved much of my lines. I'm going to go about here to sign the width, and then I can go up to about there, like that. And let me just have a look at some of the other pictures I've got. This bridge, such a nice bridge, and I don't think it has these reinforced parts like this all the way through it they're just at the ends in the middle it's more like they've got these large metal parts and it goes straight up to the ceiling so I'm gonna need to work on probably both of these simultaneously so I want to get this up to about here just so I can get an idea of the height I'm dealing with which isn't too high and I think I'm gonna have to make a couple of different variations of this so firstly I'm going to start here and at I would say round about because these are again five meters tall at round about the four meter mark roughly well for three and a half meter we're going to put in a kind of an edge just here so hello Darren how's it going by the way so we shall right click convert to editable polygon and then inside here I'm going to go and grab by edge, put in a connect, you see that appearing in the queue, and then drag that to roughly where I need it to be. So I'm looking in proportion to everything else, and I think it should be about here. Okay, and now I'm going to chamfer the distance. So 25 is too wide, let's change that to 12.5. Why 12.5? Because 25 by 25 by 25, and I believe the chamfer doubles it, so tick. Okay, now, inside each of these, well, firstly, I'm going to chamfer them out. So, what I'm going to do is grab my polygon, and this is actually quite a tricky little procedure, because the shape I'm going to get won't be exactly right at first. There's a couple of optional ways I can do this, you see. I'll need... Um, I'll show you here. You see that there. Okay, because of the way that I'm extruding this out, to get that round shape there, it's probably going to be easier just using um, a placed piece of geometry. Now, I'm going to extrude this by local normal and I'm going to extrude it by let's say probably 2.5 that work yes 2.5 seems appropriate so tick now what I want to do here obviously is then place a piece inside of here now we don't have enough polygons really to be starting that off on this but we will soon so I am going to create a cylinder and I'm going to use auto grid and I'm just going to bring it out from here like this and then up rather than down and this way I can kind of mess around with it until I get round about the right radius which I think looks like it's going to be about 9 I only need one height segment 18 sides 4 8, 12, 16. We'll have 16 sides. 
The reason for that being that it will be a lot easier for me to um, three four. It'll be a lot easier for me to get the polygons to basically connect because um, what I'm going to do is literally build this inside this piece. Okay, so let's have a look at what we have built so far. That's only one, but that's okay. Don't worry about that because I'm only going to work on one face, and there's a reason for that in that we won't have basically I can just replicate this one face over and over. Okay. Don't worry if you don't understand what I'm doing. Um, a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is just really me kind of doing my own workflow the way I do it. Just going to flip that. And I'm afraid it is possible you will get puzzled by why I'm doing stuff. It happens. It's just the way it is. Okay, I'm going to tessellate and tessellate again. Right, I'm going to have to clean this up soon, but I need this level of tessellation here. Um, right, let's get rid of these polygons. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And delete. And you may notice I'm in orthographic. I rarely go into orthographic because I find it quite jarring moving around in it. Now I'm going to get rid of some edges that I don't need here. Control backspace. But I do need, yes, quite a few, but I don't need this many. There we go. Control backspace. And control backspace gets rid of the verts as well. A lot of the modeling techniques I learned, funnily enough, were from, um, oh, what was it called again? Oh, flippin' heck. Lightwave. I remember, like, years ago, there was another artist that I used to know on 3D Palace, and he was, like, a really, really good Lightwave um, artist. A guy called Swirly Chicken. Funny name, I know. And, um, basically, he had all these kind of modelling shortcuts that he came up with, and I was like, this is all genius stuff. I mean, his stuff was absolutely brilliant. We got front page on CG Talk back when the CG Talk was kind of still relevant, and um, I'll just go over there. And um, yeah, things like being able to quickly connect polygons, you know, stuff that really seems incredibly basic now because it's built into the functionality of Max, but a lot of stuff just wasn't there, and like bridging and. All these other really cool things that I use all the goddamn time. And I think if it hadn't been for, you know, the stuff he did, I just would not have been able to progress myself as an artist. It would have been impossible. Right, now, we do have some fortune here, look, because you see these edges and the way they're lined up? They're going to allow us to line this up without any form of measurement. So let's go to the top view and zoom in. And if you select by element, see that? Now I know I can get this central just by doing that. Now if I go into my left viewport zoom, all right. I mean, I was close, but I don't want a cigar. But now I'm very close. The good thing is, unless this is literally going out to a CNC machine, most of the time this is going to be close enough. Unless you have like the biggest arsehole in the world for a boss. Uh, I have, because it's me. Right then. Now, this is nice, but I think it could possibly be a little bit larger. We shall see. But the good thing is that if it's still not right and I want it lower or higher, I can lower it or make it higher very easily. I'll show you if I have to. How does that sound? Right, we're going to use the bridge tool. One of my favourite tools. I remember it just blew my mind that you could save so much time doing this. You can also cap them. However, the cap does not give you as a precise control over your polygons. And the good thing about this kind of design, you notice how it's kind of this sunburst pattern? Because this was actually 
very popular brick pattern around about this era. So there you go. For anyone who's listening to this, I was at um, Beamish just the other day. A good friend of ours works at Beamish and invited us in on his day off because he gets friends in for free. And Beamish is the UK, possibly Europe actually, his largest open air outdoor museum. There you go, see what he did. And um, oh, we had a lovely time. Really, really fun. Right then. So that worked, and you know, I'm really sad. So what can I do to obviously make it happen on all the other bits as well? Well, I'm going to select these three. Like that, and just uh, delete. Oop, before I do, I'm going to grow them. And then delete. There we go. Now this one, which looks a bit like a puzzle box, Click grow, 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 grow. That's done. And detach. Now this becomes. Uh, I'm not going to detach it as an element. I'm just going to detach it temporarily for the moment. But it pivots all the way down there. Well, that's no bloody use, is it? Wrong. Lots of use. Why is that? Well, I shall show you. I go to my rotate and stick my angle snap on and copy rotate this 90 degrees. Let's say three times. Bamo. No more work for me, buddy. Now, yes, these all need attaching still. Which is splendidly easy, incidentally. And now, if I just go to my verts and just group select that lot and do a weld, you'll see that, oh, I've lost loads of them. Yes, because now this is a single element again. Which is exactly what I needed. Okay, now with that done, I want to focus on. I'll just show you. See that piece there? Now, this piece is interesting because of its shape. Um, we've got these rather nice, pardon me, curves here. Okay, and then you've got this cross part here and all these big old bolts there and stuff. Okay, so I'm probably going to focus on that for a little bit. Uh, there's a few ways we can do this, but to be honest, um, I think I fancy just doing it. I'm using polys because I can. So I'm going to take this. It's not doing much now, is it? It's just sitting here. And I'm going to bring that over to there. And just build myself a basic shape. So right click, convert to polygon. Actually, before I do, let's make sure it's square, shall we? So let's say 20 by 20. That makes it smaller than the other one. Convert it to poly. And then bring that in. Okay. So to the point where it basically intersects like so. Now I haven't really given any thought besides like, Bleh, go for it, to how I'm going to model this. So, uh, yeah, probably just going to go for it, really. Um, just looking at the shape. Head over there, front view, zoom. I'm still undecided on the best way to do this, really. Let's see, I think... Let's look at a circle. Yeah, I think a circle could well work. So there we go. And I go into my circle, right click, convert to edge to the spline. I can now take segments off. There's two of them there. And instead, I can now do a section on this. So uh, it's actually quite an interesting shape. I've been across this bridge numerous times in my life. Um, normally every Wednesday I'll go across this one. So rendering. Enabling viewport. Now it has too many sides. Let's give it four. And let's give it an increased radius or thickness. Maybe five. Okay, that's not bad. However, the angle. 
let's change that 45 degrees so now we have some faces and some on top perfect okay right click convert to editable polygon because that's everything we need now all right now i'm going to move this basically into the middle here yoink because this is the starting point and from here i am going to grab all these polygons so one two three four five six seven eight fourteen lovely gives us a nice curved look and there okay make sure i have the bottoms or the tops or anything like that Looks like I'm in orthographic again, doesn't it? Excellent. Okay, extrude. And I don't really want to extrude that much. Maybe about five. Yeah, that looks reasonable. Possibly three. Three looks better. Okay, tick. Next. Hello, just pop it there. Thank you very much, doll. Good lad. How was it? Excellent. Sleep well done. Right then. Very good. The next one will be reading a bedtime story live stream. Okay, so again, extrude. And um, we're just going to change this to local normal so it comes in. And you see we start getting that rim there as well, so tick. And then over the tape. Now you see there we've got an error. And you may be thinking to yourself, oh god, look at that. This will take hours and hours to correct. So grab it, click grow, click that, go border, select by border, cap, job done. Right. Now back here again. And you can set up, you know, an MCN to do this. Um, but to be honest, I won't need to do this very often. And so I don't see the point. Yes, there are tools that will make our lives quicker and easier and better. And there's less for us to do. And that's good, you know. If you don't want to learn how to do things, then please, by all means, I'd say this is four on the top. By all means, do learn how to do as little as possible. And be pleased with yourself about it. But uh, to be quite honest, I think if you want to learn to do things worthwhile, you should probably spend a little bit of time doing it. Right, starting to get somewhere here, so that's cool. Oh no, look, another error. Man, I'm doing this a lot now. Let's fix this one. Look at that. Dear me. What would my dear sweet mother say were she to see that? Hit me with a sandwich. Okay, and I'm going to bridge across here. Done. So that's fixed. Right, so we have the very, very start of this. Now, remember, I'm doing loose measurements, okay? So, as you can imagine, if I was doing this in the real world for an engineering company, I would have been executed by now. But I'm not. Now, I need to duplicate this over to here. So, I'm going to make a copy. I don't need to, it's just it's for my own benefit. So copy. I didn't create one, did I? Good, good. And then uh, I'm going to align it. So align to here. Blink. Click OK. Yep, yep, and yep. Drop on perspective and just have a wee look. Oh, lovely. I can get rid of the old one. You'll notice I haven't used any form of naming standard. And also, this can now come down. We to about there. Okay, getting nice and close. It looks like it's more or less in the right position, which is good. Uh, so I am going to grab these bottom ones and just use the scale tool. I must keep scaling them until they're flat. Same here, just scale them until they're flat. Alright, that 
worked out fairly well. Now I'm going to uniformly scale them until they're about halfway embedded. There we go. And with that done, it means I can now go into this rather nice little piece here. Okay, because we have these, you see this cross section we have here? Okay, I'll just grab it there. F3 so we can see it all. And this is nice and flat now, so that's good because I'm going to extrude it like that. And then with it extruded, I'm going to select it. And then I am going to detach it completely. And select it again, bring it out over here. And effect pivot only, center to object, effect pivot only off. Right. Now, I am going to quickly isolate this selection. I said I was going to isolate this selection. There we go. Oh, I didn't freeze everything, did I? No good. Right, so in here, I just want to quickly fix this end cap. Okay, so you know how to do this. It's dead easy. Let's do a bridge. Bridge. Okay. Done. And back down again. And end isolate. Oops, I said end isolate. There, better. Right then, down here where this part is, well, I only have a very limited view of the parts that are making this bridge. So, I haven't had a chance to get off the bus, and because unfortunately my lovely wife suffers from um, extreme agoraphobia. I can't really take the time to go over there and do it. So I'm going to freehand, because it doesn't have to exactly be this fridge. Fridge? The hell? Bridge. Okay, it's based on. So bring that down to there. Right click, convert to editable polygon. And you'll notice how I've got this edge here, and if I spin round there. Okay. That's because I only need half of it anyway. I'm going to grab this polygon and I'm going to bevel it. And I'm just basically looking at these shapes. You see those? There they go. And they kind of come in. They're nice. So bevel tool and bring it in a little bit. And then bring it in. Oops. I need to bring it in slightly faster, so I'll do that again. Not that much. It's very much a trial and error thing, getting used to doing this. So I'm just trying to get the first one come in just enough. Yeah, that should do it. Two minutes! Okay, and that gives us that shape there. Right, if you'll just excuse me please for one moment.
Okay, it's back. Right. It's pretty late here, so I can't go for too long. Now, let's have a look. Let's go straight across here. Control I. Yeah, actually, that's okay. Delete. And I'm going to isolate this, so isolate selection. And do a cut. There to there. And on the bottom side, same again. Now, this is really going to be a collection of items. Okay, we can't just make the bridge as one thing, it's not. It's not practical in the slightest. I mean, I could make a high polygon model of a bridge and throw it into end isolate. Throw it into um oh god, what do you call it? Um, Unreal Engine. And you know, it would work to a degree, but not especially well. Okay, that looks okay. Expect it zoom out. So we have that one. Now I want to get my. Oh, I think I've lost my picture. There it is. A quick look at this because there's. It's a strange old design. There's bolts and all sorts of fun things going on here. But at least we now have this, so that's going to help us. Let's find a better picture again. And oh, that's much better. I'm using this one. Okay. So I'm definitely getting nice and close again. Use this piece so front before zoom and they all connect to basically this circle going around the middle that we're gonna have to use the same calculations for. So it's roughly a well, it, no, it's exactly a 45 degree angle by the looks of things. So I'm gonna shift drag that up to there and just use rotate on it. Yeah, it looks like it is exactly 45 degrees. Okay, and this will allow me to... Basically, it looks like it's been bought out from the tangent, okay, which presumably would mean about there. I'm just going to go into expected zoom, because I want just to expand it out from this end here. So I'm just going to do some bridging. and if I do that you see I can make it longer by using the extrude so tick and back in the front view again oh sorry Darren are you building as high poly as you are going to go as you go along or do you come back and add um, it's always additive always additive Darren um, if it's not then that makes my job a lot harder. So what I tend to do, um, if you've seen kind of the high poly, the way I model high poly anyway, I tend to just have a quick look at the thing on that. What I tend to do is um, come in. I'm trying to think what I was going to say there. Yeah, with high polygon, I'll come in um, as a scaffold, and then after the scaffold, I'll start building the high poly based on the scaffold. But obviously, for the low poly model, I'll then use the scaffold and start kind of moving stuff across, really, that is in the high poly as well. Right, see there? So, we're going to have to get these two basically to come across and connect. And oof, this is going to be interesting and fun, I think. I can see these go onto a kind of a cross brace over there. So. All the way over to there. Literally. Tick. Pardon me. <coughs> Dear me, sorry about that. Let's 
same guy here. Okay, just where it's intersecting at the top and tick. It's a beautiful shape. Um, the thing is, I can't really have the polygons kind of sitting on top of each other because I don't want that level of mess. So what I'm doing at the minute is as well, I'm kind of putting it all together and then I'm going to have to basically clean it up, which is hard work. Okay, so we've got these four more or less in the right position now. Let's have a look. Stop that. Let's see. Front zoom. I can see this one's not quite in the right position. So let's have a look. Uh, that's about right. And at the minute, about right is the best I'm going to hope for. Now, those polygons at the end there, if I switch to. Where's it gone here now? Local. And just move them out a little bit more. Okay, and move that back to view. Okay, it just basically changes the way the gizmos operate. But yeah, I will start low, and as you see, I'm basically iteratively adding to it. So soon there's going to be some more detail coming along and down there. Uh, but these will be separate props, and the same works for high poly and low poly. So don't feel too worried there that you're going to miss anything out. Okay, now I need a circular piece for this, and this will be fun because obviously I need to connect it to all this stuff as well. So let me have a look. I'm going to connect these two together. And let me see. I shall go to here, here, and do a champ uh, connect. Mm, nope. Bring that back. I just want to take out this middle block, you see. Probably just easier if I just delete it. Okay, and now in the middle of this part, where these all used to connect, I have to create basically a circle. So, go to my front view, the zoom. This is an absolute logistical nightmare trying to get this to work, but it's fun. So, circle. Just going to pull it out roughly where I think it is, which is that here. And you'll notice that it's doing me a favour and basically trying to get it right straight away because it's picked up the settings from last time. So let's see, and near enough, pretty darned close. Stick my grid on. Okay. So I want that to line up to there, that to line up to there, that to line up to there, and so on and so on and so on. Very important. Okay, so we have more or less everything there. Right click, convert to editable poly. And I just noticed this is actually upside down on object 2. So I'm going to have to come back and fix that. So I think what I'll do is I'll select that by element. Because if you look, okay, it's taller on the bottom than the top, and it shouldn't be. So when I turn that around, I should really have flipped it. So I'll take that and that out of the equation again. It'll make my job a lot easier anyway when I connect these two parts together. Okay, perspective, zoom, top viewport, because I need to find where the hell that circle is, there it is, and bring it into the right area. It used to be a lot easier back before 3ds max did this weird make the lines dead thick and highlight business okay um that's like a new thing that uh, it does and i don't really like it very much there we go put that there back to zoom so this should be in pretty much the right place now 
Okay, what I'm going to do is select by edge here and do a ring. Okay, come around this side. Do a ring here as well. Control select by that. Do an extrude. And I was looking at the one underneath it, remember? Three seems good. Tick. Now on the inside. Do another ring. Control select by polygon. And another extrude. Again by local normal. Okay, so we get that part in the middle there. And tick. And now on the outside ring here. And do a ring and control select by and extrude. And this one we're gonna extrude by four. So it's slightly longer. My TV is going to standby mode because I use a giant television instead of a monitor. It's a long, long story. A clay, a clay, a clay. Uh yeah. That seems good. Although if you look, we need this bit as well. So I think what I'm going to have to do is select this and do a what's it called again? Mirror. There we are. So mirror, mirror. I'm going to copy it from Zoom and move that across. Oh dear me, I said move that across. No, oh. move that across. There we go, see? So close to there. And now that will basically be in the right place as well. Okay, perspective, zoom. Now, this means that I can now get the pieces right for selection. So I'm going to need that one and that one. And I think this one and this one uh, down here. And that one and that one. Because I love working my eye, as you know. Okay, extrude by four. Click, tick. Okay, and. We can see that there's a little bit of wonkiness going on, but not as much as I was expecting, to be fair. And this means I can now control these parts from here, which is good. So, I'm going to attach that and that. Because by attaching them, it means that I can now basically connect to them. So, if I just go in here, bridge like so yeah, I'm supposed to be downstairs watching or upstairs watching orange is the new black at the moment but right, well Sunday night time to do some streaming isolate selection because I need it all close these up and the benefit of doing this is that I can now connect these so this tricky looking shape there and there bridge okay now don't worry that it's a bit ice cream film here and that it's kind of flaring because what we do then is just select here 
and control and backspace. Oh, it's straight. Okay, next piece. Because it's such a small deviation. And it saves me having to do it using really exact methods. Because we would be here for a while. We really, really would. Okay, bridge. I'll get rid of um, the other edges in just a minute, okay? And yes, it's a complex shape. See that? That didn't even bridge correctly. I was looking at it. Okay, so. If you get that kind of error where it's not bridging correctly, this could be caused by a number of things. Remember we copied some of these. Okay, so it could be that the normals on this one are flipped. They're not, but it could have been. Um, either way though, if you're having problems, what I'm going to do is just select this, go to polygon mode, just delete the polygons manually, and just bridge them manually. Like I said, you know, you can't rely all the time on all these fantastic plugins and shit because when it comes down to it, you know, there are shortcuts, but a lot of them are just going to dick you over a lot. Whereas, at least if you're doing it manually, you know where you went wrong and you can try and fix it the next time. So you can see there's no twist in this one. Now the next one I'm going to do automatically again, and we'll see if I can use the um, twist in bridge just to fix it. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it just laughs in your face. So yeah. don't get your hopes too high. But it is a nice shape. Also, if you're wondering why I didn't just do the sec the middle and extrude out, it's because I need I need basically the tangent that these are coming off. Um, the way these were built, obviously, you know, um, Stevenson was a genius. If you don't know George Stevenson, obviously you can look him up. Um, bridge, there you go, look, that one worked. And um, the railway bridge in Newcastle is absolutely beautiful. If you've ever seen a Victorian railway station, it's kind of the same kind of idea, you know? Repeating symmetrical patterns using basically cast iron. And everything's incredibly, incredibly sturdy. There we go. And end isolate. Oh, look at that, we've even got the weird little bit there. <laughs> now, I'll attach those bits together soon because I need to basically do this again. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, and this is good because it will basically give me the pretty much exact height that I need. So, front and zoom. And I am going to grab everything to there and just shift and drag and clone it as an object. There we go. With that done, I can now turn it over. Yoink, 180 degrees. Put that into there. And build it a little friend. So, hold down shift while I do this next one. And I'm going to bring it down. Go to my front viewport and zoom. See how it's doing. Should be yeah, nearly there. I think I can See if there's a little gap in between these. There's a teeny one. Let's bring that down again. There we go. That should do it. And now, if I go in here and attach this piece, and then go straight through here and do a weld. There we go. That gets a bit of a load of verts, and we have 
these two nice strong pieces here. Now, if you remember from earlier, this left one's probably going to be my primary, so I'm just going to get rid of parts that I don't need. So, again, remember, if you don't think you need the polygons, then why are they there? What I'm doing is just double clicking while holding control, by the way. I used to have a program that showed all the keystrokes I had on the screen, then I missed that. It was by a member of 3D Palace called Dr. Feelgood, and I really hope Dr. Feelgood's doing cool. He was a nice man. Okay, now, la, 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 front view point was in. See how tall this is? And, I mean, I don't believe for a second that Thomas Edison, you know, was expecting us to have these great big tall double-decker buses, which we have now. Um, yeah, his bridge in Newcastle, even though it's only a single carriageway bridge, is a work of engineering and a half, it really is. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, so remember, this is just our dummy piece, okay? Just This is our Chad, the Chad. Right then. Now, remember we have this piece here. Hey. So I'm going to flute that over. And just find a good place for it around there. Okay, let's get it right in the middle. That's where these things intersect. Then bring it over. And I can see that I'm only going to need one of these, you see, which is a help. Hope you're doing comfortable over there, by the way, Darren. Enjoying this piece of uh, rather beautiful. I think it was. Was it Victorian era he was alive in? I can't quite remember. God, he's a damn genius, though. Okay, perspective zoom. I mean, we haven't still got the. Um, oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? We haven't got the um, rivets in place yet, but. You know, that's coming. That is coming. Or at least parts that kind of make you think there's going to be rivets, if you know what I mean. Now, I'll just have a quick look at this. Okay. Now, I've been going for just about, let me see, 53 minutes. Oh, no, Darren. Well, never mind, you know. good thing is, because you're in Australia, at least I presume it's Australia, um, you'll be finished whilst I'm, well, when I go to sleep, and then you can have a beer. One of the benefits of being somewhere, I presume, nice and warm, is that that cold beer will taste even nicer. Now, if we look at this, this is obviously the stuff on the outside here. This is the stuff on the inside. Now, remember, it's modular, the way that this is built. So, the good thing is that um, all we can do is need to build one of these and these two sets here. We don't really need the drain pipe. That was a much later addition. And these little rivet holes here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. So, save as... and I'm going to pop it in my clinic folder, just here. New folder, and we shall call this Good Australia. Nice, lovely country, full of brim of scary animals that will kill you. Uh, let me see. Iron Bridge. Not to be confused with the Iron Bridge, which I believe was another one of Stevenson's fantastic designs. Okay, and we're going to call this um, RIP01. Okay, and click Save. And there's a lot of stuff being built today, so I'm quite pleased about that. Um, I think in the next section, I'll build the part basically that goes here as well as the bars, which I believe, to be fair, the bars were almost certainly an afterthought. Um, they came much, much later, because they look like they're made of aluminium. And so my guess is their job is just to stop people falling in front of the buses. And then up top, obviously, you've got the big flat bit that the trains go on. But I don't need to design that, because we're only seeing the underneath. Uh, I might as well show you how things are going in the clinic software. I'll just fire that up. Doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Won't be long.
Come on, load you bloody thing. Oh, that worked. That's surprising. Okay, and I'm just going to throw up the 4.16. And I'm throwing that up rather than the build because it's got um, better lighting in the first section, which is the Clinic 1 loading area. It's came a long way, but um, the thing is, level 8 and level 10, I think, have to be changed, because I'm not overly happy with it. 71%. And as to why I'm not happy with it, well, I'll show you. Um, these are all kind of clinical areas with narration and various other parts like that. But um, area eight, I, uh, at night, just didn't have enough, and I wanted to kind of move the um, ex move the experimental clinic part into a kind of a real world area, rather than having it inside a kind of clinical control area. If you, you'll have no idea what I mean, but eventually, when you bought clinic and you think to yourself, wow, this made me a much better person, you'll understand. Remember, of course, you can you can donate and fund clinic with lots and lots of your hard-earned money just by sending me it. <laughs> or sending me a working Oculus Rift, because mine's been bricked rather annoyingly. Because it turns out Oculus are just exactly as bad as Sony are. Right, so there's obviously still quite a few assets that need finishing in this section. Um, I want to go back to Game Station. There we go. Game Station? Yeah. Game, game Show. Yeah, there's still quite a few assets in this that need finishing, but then again, this is not near finished yet. Um, but the lighting's much better than it was. And inside, obviously, you can see we have all the various bits and bobs that the place needs. Um, considering the user can't actually get up to this bit, this bit is entirely designed to be seen from the outside that's what it's for so and because it's for an oculus rift you'll notice that the um, focus is designed for look at control so you look at something and your focus changes and that's really important for this kind of thing but again all these assets were obviously created by moi Let's go down the old slippery slip here. Whee. There we go. These assets here weren't. These are purchased assets because I was in a rush. But the uh, whole point being, obviously, I can walk into my main area, which is down here. I'm going to tweak the walking speed because I've got it deliberately set very, very low. But in here is reception. And then reception leads you to the hub, which probably will load. And then from the hubs, you get to all the various different kind of clinical levels and so on and so forth. So there's a lot to see there. I'll let it finish loading though because that's what it's doing. Um, anyway, next session will probably be on Wednesday evening. I'm going to continue doing stuff on the bridge. I want to go and get some more references. Um, my son's birthday is on Wednesday as well, so here you can probably hear some of the narration going on. Again, I'm playing it in game so the transitions don't work. However, as you can see, we have a very clinical look to things, nice and clean, very clinical. It's not a game. Um, and section 8, if I just go up to here, was originally supposed to simulate kind of a cliffside walk, but it's rubbish and I don't like it. So I'm going to 
delete that one and do something different instead. Anyway, just so you know what I'm doing. Right, I am going to get a move on. I hope uh, anyone who's watching has a good day, good night, good afternoon, or good morning. And uh, love and hugs.